Okay, 各位委員，我哋 Members, thank you for attending the panel on constitutional affairs meeting. We have a rather important item on the agenda for discussion. So, I would. Uh, would members please observe the time limit strictly? First item: confirmation of minutes of the meeting. According to the secretariat, we have not received any proposed amendments. So, can I take it that the minutes are confirmed? Thank you. Confirmed. Second item: information papers issued since the last meeting. Members should have received a number of papers. CB bracket two one five four two stroke sixteen seventeen bracket oh one and CB bracket two one six three one stroke sixteen seventeen bracket oh one and also CB bracket two one six six zero stroke sixteen seventeen bracket oh one. Uh, any questions on the on them? No. Then item three items for discussion at the next meeting. Uh, let me invite the administration in. All right. I would like to invite Ms. Rosanna Law, Deputy Secretary, to brief us on the two proposed items for discussion. Thank you, Chairman, Members. At the next meeting of the CA panel, we'd like to discuss two items. First, a review on the counting and voting stations operations for DC and LC elections. In relation to the DC election in 2015 and the LegCo election 2016, the EAC, in its report, make recommendations on the operations of the voting and counting stations of the two elections, including the uh, borrowing of venues and uh, the use of information technology in the electoral process. Some members in the past have also made suggestions on the voting hours and the counting arrangements. We have conducted a preliminary analysis and would like to seek members' views before taking follow-up action. The second item we'd like to discuss is the is a review on the number of elected seats for the sixth term DC election. To prepare for the next term's seat DC election in 2019, we have conducted a review on the number of elected seats for the DC election for the sixth term. And we also like to seek members' views on um, our analysis so that the EAC can, in a timely manner, prepare for the uh, DC election for the next term. Any views? Mr. Lam Chuck Ting. Chairman, in previous meetings, when we discussed the items for discussion in the future, I mentioned that CY Leung administration has undertaken to amend Section 3 and 8 of the Prevention on Primary Ordinance to cover the Chief Executive. And Chairman, you once mentioned whether it is possible to hold a meeting in June to discuss the item. And we're in the middle of June already. And according to the administration's proposal, the item is not on the list. CY will step down from office very soon. Now, is it the case that we won't be able to discuss the topic before his office ends? To apply the prevention of bribery ordinance on the chief executive, it is not just under the purview of the um, Constitution and Mainland Affairs Bureau. And we have um, t we have heated members' views, and we have reflected the view to the administration's wing. We've been informed by the administration wing in writing that the legislative amendments involve the basic law and uh, regulations on the constitution of Hong Kong and the constitutional status of the chief executive, and they are looking into the constitutional matters involved. And once the analysis is completed, the legislative amendment exercise will take place. Do you know anything about the timetable? Well, Chairman, we have not received uh, any proposal to discuss this item for the remaining of the term. Um, from the administration wing, and we are proposing to discuss the two items mentioned 
at the next meeting. Can you reflect the, f the view of this panel on uh, the uh, time frame and give us a written reply? Our chairman, they have been studying into the matter for five years already, not just five months. And they're still studying that. We just asked them to come and brief us in a meeting. The progress, I find this unacceptable if they do not have a timetable because CY will be stepping down soon. How can we hold him accountable? Well, uh, I'm asking about the uh, timetable. Just let them give us a reply first. I think, Chairman, you should personally invite them to come to a meeting. How can the administration wing study the same issue for five years? It's very unreasonable because CY Le will be a deputy chair of the CBPCC very soon. Any other views? If there are no other views, and these two items will be discussed at the next meeting. Item four. The sign of ballot papers for Legislative Council elections. There are two papers which have been forwarded to members, CB bracket 21619 stroke 1617 bracket 01 and CB bracket 21655 stroke 1617 bracket 03, which is a background brief prepared by the Legislative Secretariat. For item five, uh, we may need a longer time for that. So I'm going to give a very strict time limit for this item. Uh, would you like to start with four minutes or three minutes? Three minutes. Three minutes, questions and answers included. First, Mr. Lakofan. Thank you. Chairman. Now, the administration has proposed to change the design of ballot papers and the emblem of political parties and the photos of candidates will be uh, scrapped. And I oppose that because many electors remember our name as well as our faces and our po political party emblems when they vote. So deleting these parts will affect them. More importantly, Perhaps you have missed out something in drawing up this proportion, uh, proposal. For example, for this term's uh, uh, logical election, we have um, a member, a candidate from the labor sector, Mr. Ho Kai Ming, and then in the DC supersede election, um, election, there was also a candidate with the same name, Ho Kai Ming. So if both of them had taken part in the same um, GC election, then probably some voters would have cast the wrong vote. Perhaps in the same constituency like Kowloon East, there could be two or three candidates with the same name. So if we only have the candidate's name and a number, then it could mislead voters. They might fix the wrong chop. Let's say because for constituencies we have more and more candidates now, uh, from candidate one to twenty, and uh, at a glance the voter may just read the name Ho Kai Ming and then, uh, then then put down the wrong the vote. He might opt for um, Ho Kai Ming from FTU, but he might in the end vote for somebody else. How can you prevent this from happening? And would you consider my example? And would you? Therefore, decide not to um, do away with the photos or the party emblems. Thank you, Chairman. Because I don't have time to give a briefing to members, I'd like to explain at the outset that the, the, the government keeps all options open. Indeed, the EAC, the Electoral Affairs Commission, um, also agreed that uh, changing the design of ballot papers may affect the voting and counting process. But in other jurisdictions, we have drawn reference, and uh, they include the names of political parties and names of candidates, and they just delete the photos and the party emblems. We understand um, the uh, points. So let's say uh, perhaps the name of the political party can be included, or perhaps the words non-affiliated candidate or independent candidate can be included. Other than that, we'll also consider how uh, in in the voting booth, we can provide all the particulars of the candidates concerned. Next, Mr. Ronak Chen. I have three minutes. 
Now, um, first question: the administration has opined that uh, the design of the or the size of the ballot papers would affect the uh, voting and counting process, printing, so on and so forth. Uh, and I also agree that the font size is already too small, and uh, if it gets smaller, it will be in- illegible. But then, for the ballot paper. The suggestion is to do away with the photo and the party emblem. However, it only ha- it also has to do with the voting booths. For example, at the entrance, if there are cl- if if there is clear information displayed at the entrance and inside the voting booth, then we may consider the idea. But then now the gov- the administration's proposal is just to. Revised design of ballot papers without mentioning anything about the design of the uh, voting booth. Can they elaborate? Well, thank you. In fact, we have set out the suggestion in uh, the text itself, and uh, next month when we come back to uh, discuss the voting and counting arrangements, we can also further explore the proposals. But as I mentioned, the particulars of all candidates are included in the voting booth, including their photos and the party emblems, and these in- these particulars are provided by the candidates themselves. And if we are to uh, include less information on the ballot paper, it means that when a voter enters a booth, we have um, pictorial uh, information and text information of candidates, and it's easy for voters to uh, check the uh, candidate's number against the information. And perhaps members with experience can also tell us if we take this approach apart from inside the voting booths where they believe are conspicuous places for voters uh, convenience and we'll be happy to follow up on the suggestions well and also in the administration's paper the largest size that a computer can read uh, uh, is 210 millimeters times um, 660 millimeters. So I want to know whether that we have computer equipment available for reading 440 millimeters by 458 millimeters. Well, or is it the case that there are such computers only that they are not available in Hong Kong because using IT is a global trend? Well, let's take a look at the uh, actual example. This is the size of the ballot paper of uh, NT East. Uh, last year, and the actual size is uh, as shown. I understand that there could be equipment available, but the, uh, it's technically difficult, and we're yet we have yet to uh, to um, to find one. Doctor An Cheng. In the future, we may have uh, e-counting, or we ha- may have computers doing the counting. So we need to plan ahead. I think it's justified, and. Compared to other nearby jurisdictions, Hong Kong is lagging behind in this regard. And as mentioned by some members just now, of course the name is important. Apart from the well, because uh, the names of candidates may be similar and it could be confusing. Uh, with you know, with uh, say the uh, first name Kai Ming, and at the same time we also have. Um, uh, faces that really look alike. Some say that Lao Guo Fan. Uh, and uh, Mr. Andrew Wen are uh, alike. Uh, they are kind of chubby. Uh, La Kok Fan just said that he is slimmer than Andrew Wen. But anyway, especially for ladies, they like to have their photos doctored and together with makeup and similar um, apparel and makeup. And people may find it hard to distinguish the different candidates. And uh, I think that names and photos are important, and also party emblem. Let's say for some constituencies, uh, the the uh, DAB has been uh, serving the constituency, and they have been doing well. And uh, the constituents might therefore appreciate DAB candidates in particular, and they would like to support them. So party emblems are also also important, Chairman. My question for the administration is this: 
Uh, there are other jurisdictions using computers in the counting process. Have you conducted any comparison or analysis? <laughs> Perhaps uh, candidates could use use pseudonyms when they contest the next election. Any response? Well, especially on electronic uh, vote counting, we do not have any examples. We have actually studied the examples of Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Singapore, the UK, and so on. In all these uh, advanced democratic countries, they do not have any uh, electronic voting or vote counting arrangements. But I, we have seen that these uh, ballot forms in other jurisdictions uh, do not really contain uh, the photographs of candidates or, or large pictures. In the UK, they provide for party emblems uh, to be put onto the ballot papers. But since we're using a list system for one single list, it may contain up to the information of nine members. Selvin Young, thank you. In Hong Kong, we have practiced democratic election for so many years, and it has been. It's been. It we have not had. Uh, a common uh, a public discussion on the ballot paper. Uh, so I think in this regard, we we need to have a, a more in-depth discussion. The department cited uh, show us the ballot forms of other democratic countries. I like to also quote some other examples in Flo in the Flo state of Florida in the states. In the ballot paper, they will prescribe that the letter should not. The size of the letter should not be less than 410. In the state of Victoria, in Australia, since they have many candidates, the longest ballot would could only be up to one meter long uh, to cater to the circumstances. Other than the machines, uh, are there any prints? So uh, I think, so have you ever considered how we would be able to, you know, uh, satisfy the circumstances of Hong Kong so that the electorate can take participate in the election, uh, you know, you know, uh, according to a fair, uh, you know, mechanism. So, do you have any any uh, ideas on that? Yes, we've actually. You know, contemplated these issues. Like Mr. Young said, we understand if the size of the font on ballot papers are too small, then for the elderly voters, and even for the voters who are middle aged, it would be a challenge. So we have tried our best to strike a balance. We want to ensure that we can, we will not have to reduce the size of the uh, party emblem and the uh, the photos. In 2012, the size of the ballot papers were the same, but at that time we uh, have a shorter candidate list because for every, you know, uh, you know, uh, space we would uh, leave more blank so that you can, uh, we can differentiate between the candidates. Since we have 26 lists this time in the 2016 election, we've already tried to do away with the blank in between. In order that we don't have to shorten the <clears throat> the uh, the square for each candidate on the ballot form, so we can consider members uh, suggested that we can uh, include the, the photograph, the name, and the party emblem of the candidates on the ballot form. For the next term, if we have more list contesting the, uh, the election, then we will have less space to actually, uh, <clears throat> you know. Uh, to maneuver, and that's why we are putting forward this proposal. Now, given the current space, uh, how many candidates uh, do you, do, does the AC think you can include on the ballot ballot uh, form, and uh, and how many extra candidates could be accommodated on this ballot form? We have an up to a, a maximum of twenty four squares. Last time we had twenty two list. In other words. Uh, Based on the current size and design of the ballot form, we can only allow for 24 boxes. 
Well, this is actually a ballot form we use in the 2016 election. But if we have more less contesting election, Mr. Le Young would, would have would, would agree that we have to reduce the size of the squares uh, further. Permanent Secretary, well, some members put forward some uh, raise some very reasonable queries. So before you come to discuss with us the operations of the polling station. Perhaps you can consider whether or not electronic voting will be able to resolve most of the, the, the problems. You mean electronic voting? Electronic voting. I think we can discuss that. Uh, we only need to discuss it at the next meeting. Now, if we have the information, we can, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, give members our preliminary views. But this is something with long-term implications. We would need to conduct an in-depth study before we, we have any proposals. We have some preliminary views already. Ms. McMakin, I don't think any members would agree to doing away with the photos of the candidates. Some members said that there had been uh, two, uh, two candidates with the same name of Ho Kai Ming. It's rather confusing because uh, you have the uh, you know uh, the, the uh, uh, Ho Kai Ming from the FTU and the uh, and the ADPL, and even the media sometimes would mix up the two. Uh, so this is really you know uh, a problem. So if we want to do away with the photos and the emblem uh, for technical reasons. Even if you include the party logo, it may not work. Just imagine uh, Mr. Okai Ming representing the FTU. He's wearing a vest with the emblem of F FTU. It's still mistaken for Okai Ming of the ADPL. So even if you put on the logo, put in the logo, it may not be able to avoid the confusion. So I, I just wonder whether you can, you know, explore whether there are any technologies you can use to resolve the problem. Do not try to adjust the size of the ballot form uh, by, you know, uh, 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 based on the the, the, the the information of the uh, candidates. We may have two candidates with the name Lo Chi Kuang, and that could also be confusing. So I hope the permanent secretary will not simply say that you want to delete uh, some certain things in order to 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 adjust the size of of the uh, of the uh, information about the papers if we want the voters to only you know read carefully the profile of the candidates and they will queue up and then look up the information at the polling station i think the the voting procedure will be even more confusing chairman definitely we will not do so lightly we'll be most careful we understand that we need to discuss members about this issue regarding the question whether or not uh, the timetable would be affected if we do away with the, with the photos and the party emblems. Well, the practical consideration is that the ballot form is already so large. When we distribute the ballot forms, it takes a long time for our staff to, to distribute the voting papers. Otherwise, they could be actually, you know, uh, torn or spoiled, and there might be arguments following that. And uh, if the ballot form were folded, uh, uh, there were also the concern that whether or not, uh, you know, uh, uh, s uh, you know uh, there might be some confusion. So it takes, so the time involved is long. So we've actually put forward this proposal after we've uh, considered what happened at the last election. But I, like I said, we have an open mind. We certainly will, you know, uh, Put priority on uh, views put forward by members. Claudia Mo, it is unfortunate that the name of Mr. Ho Chi Ho Kai Ming or Lao Chi Kuang has become you know a subject of uh, uh, discussion. Uh, Chairman, uh, you you know said candidates might consider using pseudonyms, but I think Leung Kuo Hong already used a pseudonym of long hair, so we do have a precedent. Today we are discussing the design of the ballot papers. I was rather surprised at initially 
uh, is, is, does it mean that the government will not be put for proposing, you know, political reform, and that we are going to have one man one vote, universal suffrage for the electoral election for the next term, and that is why you are proposing to stick to the present arrangement and then try to overcome the problem that the ballot form is too large in size. But in politics, you must never say never. I think you would agree with that. To put it simply, uh, they are now proposing that we do away with the photograph of the candidates and the party emblem. I don't belong to any political party, so it has nothing to do with me. But I understand that there are regulations, uh, you know, providing for the use of photos. Like Dr. N. Jiang said, some people really look alike. People can Photoshop their their appearances, or you know, uh, have such heavy makeups that you know uh, that they, they could look like a different person. So, other than the time constraint, I think the photos would should have, would have to be taken during the last six months. And I think we should, you know, uh, you know, ensure that the candidates will not use very heavy makeup that the true appearance may may, may not be identified. Chairman, uh, while such discussions are very entertaining, but I don't think it's worth our while to spend one section of our uh, time slot to discuss this. Uh, other members said that it takes too long for vote counting, and then we can discuss it at our next meeting. Uh, I understand that we have so many items for discussion on the list already. Uh, that we have one item uh, about the role of political parties, and this was proposed in 2011, and the subject has been delayed until now. So it's not very satisfactory, Chairman. Whether or not we have assumed what the political system will be like four years from now. The answer is no. It's exactly because we don't know what the system, what will, what the system will be like. Why did you set right at the outset that we're going to do away with the photos? Well, if there are too many, uh, you know, candidates, there will be more lists, and and the problem that we've encountered will become a more more genuine problem. But you don't know whether there will be political reform. So what's the point of discussing this now? Uh, Mr. Pan Xiu Ping, thank you. I think other members already re asked the questions I wanted to ask. The three proposals put forward by the administration, first of all, uh, to do away with the photos and the uh, and the emblem of the organization, and thirdly, uh, are preserving the names of the candidates, but you might have candidates with the same names. Although the government always said that they have an open mind, but the, uh, of the three uh, proposals, I think uh, in the last, uh, the third option, uh, that is uh, reducing the size of the ballot paper, the, the, the squares in the ballot paper. Now, in theory, given the development of technology, could the government conduct a study and then Show us the findings at the next meeting. No matter how you shrink the size, in 2016, there you provide for 24 squares, 22 had already been taken up. In the next election, there might be more lists, and you will not be able to resolve the problem of you know of uh, the si the size constraint in the ballot form. So I think the government should consider the option of electronic voting. Deputy Secretary. Now, if we provide less information on the ballot paper, we can accommodate more uh, lists. Then, in which case, we would need to ensure that the information should be as brief as possible. We are putting forward various options here because we feel that members may have uh, uh, rather different views regarding <coughs> photographs and party emblems. As for electronic voting, in recent years we have been trying to find out whether there are any successful examples in overseas jurisdictions. But so far, like I said, we've looked at Australia, New Zealand, Canada, 
and the UK, we have not seen any examples of uh, electronic voting or vote counting system. New Zealand had considered this, but they've not been able to do it. So we'll go back and take a look again, and next month when we discuss the, the vote counting arrangement, we'll see whether we have some preliminary views we can share with members. But I must emphasize that we don't have any mature, you know, uh, proposals at this stage. Mr. Lam Chak Ting, Chairman, well, the candidate lists are too long, and this is uh, the doing of the administration because it's the administration that comes up with the constitutional system as well as the uh, demarcation of boundaries and also the threshold. Uh, for um, standing in an election, because you need to have you know some hundred nominations and then you pay a deposit. It's a very low threshold for electrical candidates, and you also have this equal time rule for media organizations, and that yeah candidates should be given equal time. As a result, we have some candidates who um, only minded to uh, sell insurance policies and candidates who just like to perform dances. We have all sorts of um, strange candidates, and that's supposed to be a solemn election. Now, there are uh, 24 candidates uh, having less than 3,000 3, votes. Well, the minimum threshold is um, 20,000 votes at the moment, and it is you who attract, who have managed to attract so many such candidates to take part in the election. There are candidates who use the election as a publicity platform. Let's say if I'm an insurance agent, if I'm doing the undertaker business in the funeral home, then, well, I, of course, would take part in the election. I can talk about the elderly um, uh, issue, aging population, lack of uh, columbarium and niches, and then I just um, repeat my name and uh, advertise myself. This is the doing of the administration. You can do away with the photo or the the party emblem, but the problem is the list is getting too long, and you're the cause of the problem. Deputy Secretary, any response, Chairman? Well, I think that uh, the right to um, take part in election is an important principle. The administration has no intention to undermine this right. I'm sorry, I don't agree with you at all, because if you talk about reasonable logical threshold, let's say there should be 400 and 500 nominations so that at least the candidate should be backed by some public mandate for running in an election. But now the 100 nomination threshold is just too low. You can just find anybody um, from your from the neighborhood to 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 nominate you, and also you should scrap the equal time rule because other candidates who have a real prospect would be put in the t same uh, platform as those who just wish to advertise themselves, and it's absurd. Anything to respond? No, Mr. Wuchi, why not here? Uh, Dr. Chen Chong Tai, thank you, Chairman. I think that this discussion on the size of ballot papers can come to a conclusion. I don't think we must escalate it to a constitutional level. I subscribe to the views of other members. If the function of the ballot paper is to provide more information to make the election process more transparent, then I don't think deleting the photo, etc., can help improve the flow of information. Uh, rather, I have this conspiracy theory. I'd like to know whether there is any political motive or agenda behind this administration's proposal, because in the last logical election, there was censorship of. Uh, uh, censorship of the uh, candidate's statements. The words um, self-independence, self-determination, uh, those, those words were censored by the REO. So it's easier to censor words but not photos. My concern is that if you d delete the photos, let's say 
if I if, if my shirt comes with a logo or some slogan then deleting my photo would mean um, eliminating my political message that is you are neutralizing the um, most controversial political message in an election. I want the administration to explain whether there is any political motive behind this. Chairman, um, absolutely untrue. Uh, actually, for the, all the information that can appear on a ballot paper, uh, it's clearly stipulated in the law. We just act in accordance with the law. And Chairman, we have come up with this proposal solely because of the recommendations put forward by the EAC in its report. And it's not only targeting this uh, the, the last LACHCO election, and we wish to have a meaningful discussion with members on the proposal. I'd like to supplement that this actually happened. In the last LACHCO election, some candidates wore some um, pendants uh, or other um, accessories on their outerwear, as with the words like uh, self-determination, and um, such an act was criticized by the pro-establishment camp as advocating independence of Hong Kong, and uh, Siwa Leung also criticized them, saying that self-determination is a pretext for independence, pro-independence. So I want to say that the pictorial description can also uh, help state the position of a political party or the message of the political party. So it is impossible to um, delete the photos. Next, Mr. Ray Chen. Thank you, Chairman. Well, um, I think that as a classic Chinese saying goes, uh, we are doing away with the information on the ballot paper to suit the size of the ballot paper. And even more absurdly, you can say that the large ballot paper is a result of a long list under the representational um, list system, and you should review the system. But we should review the situation. We cannot just blame the system for the size of the paper. I think the motive of the administration's proposal uh, is this. If the pallet paper has to grow to this size, we should not. Well, we we, we should uh, discuss whether to um, have all the information included in the pa ballot paper, even if there are twenty four candidates, or w whether it is important to control the size of the ballot paper. Well, we should have a consistent view. For example, the government should not cut any information therein, no matter how big the ballot paper is. And we already mentioned a few such issues. You may have similar names. Uh, let's say if you have a if you have a really uh, special sounding name, then it's already unequal in nature because because uh, your name will not be confused with another's. And you can also say um, prohibit the use of aliases so that long hair and and my own alias cannot be used. But I want to, but I don't want to discuss with you about scrapping information. Let's say if you have a list of nine candidates, can you limit? limit the area of photos let's say if you confine the area to to a certain size then even if you put all the picture all the photos in they would be too small to 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 be uh, meaningful so let's say if you have a long list then can you just confine the area for photos so that they can just put in the first two or three candidates photos with reasonable estimation, I think that we can confine it to just say 20 odd candidates. Uh, just a brief reply, please. Thank you, Mr. Ray Chen, for helping us uh, think 
about solutions. Uh, we need to emphasize that we are thinking from the perspective of the electoral operations, not from costs, and that is our uh, operations regarding the voting and counting, and if the list gets longer, how we can cater for all the candidates. Well, we're supposed to conclude the discussion at 3.20 for this item because I want to give more time to item 5 discussion. We have three more members waiting or four members waiting to speak. But if there are no other members wishing to speak, I will draw a line here or we will go beyond 3.20. All right, so I'll draw a line here. We have five members, Horace Chung, Paul Chair, Deputy Chair, Nathan Law, and uh, Jeffrey Lam. I'll draw a line here. Next, Mr. Hor Horace Chung. Thank you, Chairman. Well, just now I heard in the past 30 minutes that the administration um, keeps all options open. We do not have a preconceived stance. and. Frankly, I find this quite strange because the EAC has come up with recommendations in its report. And if you believe that these recommendations are good, and even in the face of, of objection, this council, you should try to lobby members' support. Or if you don't think that the recommendation is good, you should not waste an hour's time to discuss the proposal here. Um, I don't think it's a way to go for you to say, um, Take it or leave it. I don't care. Well, the EAC has come up with a number of pro um, reasons for uh, making this recommendation. Uh, for example, the ballot boxes cannot accommodate uh, so many ballot pa large ballot papers, and also when the staff uh, has have to tear off the uh, ballot papers, they need to spend extra time to prevent damage, and then. Um, that is why you propose that the ballot paper should not be too big. And the fact is, we do not have electronic voting system in Hong Kong. But one day when we have a paperless electoral process, you should devise a new ballot paper suitable for e-voting instead of using the existing ballot paper anyway. I don't think these reasons are genuine reasons. And about scrapping candidates' photos or organizations and blooms at at present these are very valuable um, particulars uh, for voters reference and instead of doing your job you're asking voters to compromise their rights so that the EAC can manage the election properly i think you're putting the cart before the horse in relation to the EAC recommendation and the five reasons I'd like to have your view on the, these reasons whether they can be resolved th through administrative means instead of asking uh, voters to compromise their convenience to help EACs work thank you chairman for the question we didn't we have not arbitrarily come up with this proposal. In terms of um, the design of voting booths, of course, we will provide candidates information therein. And for more than one election, the EAC has come up with the same recommendation for definitely for some reasons. In the uh, transportation of um, ballot papers and counting process, Indeed, there are difficulties, and it's true that our staff had to be extra careful when tearing off the ballot papers. And these were actual what actually happened in the previous election. Sorry, yes, I'll have to stop you here, Mr. Porcher. Thank you, Chairman. I don't think we should blame um, the administration for raising such a minor issue. I think rather it's a major issue. We often criticize the administration for um, for uh, putting up the excuse that there is still much time to review the electoral process and when the election is clear near they will say that they have no time i think uh, now we have um, we have different issues we have low threshold we have too many lists etc i agree but i think that instead of 
waiting for the next opportunity nearing the election when the administration would say that there is no time to make any change now. We should review at an early stage because you mentioned the number of jurisdictions just now. Uh, what about the ballot papers in the United States? Sometimes the election may involve um, president, governors, senators, and representatives. So why is it that the ballot, they can use the e-voting uh, process and uh, ballot, the ballot papers can hold all the information. Of course, different jurisdictions have different culture, different different uh, uh, level of education, and we need to include Chinese as well, which may take up space. And in some jurisdictions, they don't allow photos. And if they and, and they believe that if you can't read and you you must rely on photos, that means you're not eligible to to vote. And that's the view of that jurisdiction. But I still think that this is a major issue, and I need to make my position clear. I don't think that uh, we have a consensus here. Well, of course, uh, sometimes we would say that this is fake consultation because you have decided uh, on the matter anyway. But now you say you keep all options open. It seems you haven't figured out what to do. Uh, should we have a um, more large-scale review or reform, for example, to make the constituency smaller and also to confine the list, uh, so on and so forth? I wonder when you're going to do it. Deputy Secretary, as Mr. Chair said, in an election, everything is interrelated. For example, the design of the ballot paper will tell you whether or not the vote counting process can be smooth, or also whether the design of the ballot paper will make it easier for us to consider electronic voting. These are the issues that we are thinking about at the moment. Uh, today, uh, members of all, uh, all uh, members uh, uh, suggested that it may not be feasible to delete the emblems and the photos. Now, you've also asked many questions. As we plan for the next electrical election, all these issues, we, we will discuss with members all these issues. Deputy Chairman. Thank you. If we make reference of the ballot <coughs> forms in other jurisdictions, uh, take the U.S., for example. They do have a very long list on a ballot form. They could have elections for the president, congressmen, senators, and and, and so they could the, the voters could actually vote all these uh, you know uh, candidates you know on a single ballot form. I've actually gone to the states to to observe the election, and the whole election process is an education process, and the voters have to get used to the ballot form. Whether you make reference to the UK or the US experience, at least the name and the party emblems are there. The voters, you know, support of the part, the political party is a very important factor in determining how they vote. And honestly, today, I've heard the views of many uh, members. I think the voters, I think the, the ballot form uh, you know, all along contain the photos and the party emblem. That has been, you know, uh, the system we have uh, been using. But if suddenly we are now told that the, in future the machine will not be able to process such a large ballot form, and you will therefore have to do away with the photos or the party emblems, well, I, I would, I don't think I can accept that argument. I think you should go back to the uh, uh, EAC to discuss with them whether or not. Electronic voting is such that <clears throat> the size of the ballot paper, as it as it stands now, would make it impossible. I think you should talk to the EAC rather than asking them to do away with the photos or the party emblems on the ballot forms. I don't think you should think along the, those lines. You should consider with the EAC as to whether or not you can further increase the size of the ballot forms. In the states, you can do it. So I want you to explore uh, in that direction. I therefore don't agree uh, with your proposal that we should uh, delete the photos or the party emblems. Thank you. Any response? No. We've heard members' uh, views. 
Mr. Nathan Law. Thank you. According to the paper, the government is going to propose some changes to the ballot form for several reasons. First of all, in certain vote counting stations, they don't have space to uh, accommodate the, the, the ballot boxes. And also, when they, they you know give the uh, ballot forms, the staff will need to be very careful. And thirdly, uh, if the ballot form is too large, it will take longer to count the votes. But I don't think these are good reasons why we should, uh, you know, delete some of the information on the ballot forms. The constitution in Hong Kong is very large, different from the states in the UK. With a large constituency, the, the voters would, they would have to remember the phase, uh, the party affiliation of the candidates of their choice. So when I look at these three proposals, I. The first thing that, I, that come to my mind is that we should consider technology. We can consider whether we can work with the cyber port to see whether or not we can come up with better equipment. You may consider working together with the manufacturer so that the ballot forms could be torn off more easily, or that there could be machines that can read larger ballot forms. I think that's the 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 the, 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 the right direction to take. If on the ballot forms you delete some of the candidate information, you don't know what the impact will be. You wouldn't know what the outcome will be. Well, well this is some a risk which, to, for me, uh, I think it's, it's difficult to, to, to control. I think we should use technology to resolve the problem. So have you talked to the EAC? Or the uh, you know uh, innovation technology bureau to see whether technology could resolve the problem, chairman. Yes, we have all, all along not just proposed to do away with some of the uh, you know candidates' information. We've also tried to explore whether or not we can accompany more lists on the ballot form. We will continue to talk to the stakeholders. And see whether we can come with some new technologies. I think more than one member have suggested whether or not you know technology cannot handle such large ballot forms. You put forward three proposals, just in case certain information could be displayed at the at the polling station. Uh, there's no way you can uh, check whether or not it's been. You know, uh, contaminated or, or rigged. So, I think you should talk to other departments to see whether you can come up with a better, you know, uh, ballot forms. Chairman, in the last uh, legislative election, there were 22 lists for NT yeast. The ballot form was very long and large. We all have seen that the political spectrum is becoming wider and wider, and many. We have more and more candidates contesting the election, whether they come from the pan democratic camp or the pro government camp. Uh, you are having, we are seeing more and more candidates coming forward to take part in the election. If we continue with the present design of the ballot form, I don't know how large the ballot form will become eventually. Of course, some people suggest that we should do away with the party emblems or the photos. But uh, there are voters who are illiterate. They just remember the, 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 the appearance or the party emblem. So if we're going to cancel both, what are we going to do to help these voters? At polling stations, for the candidates of the different sectors are on display. And we can actually deal with that. The ballot form is not a form you use for matchmaking. People who go into the polling station just remember the number of the candidate. By the time they go to the polling station, if they only need to read the candidate's information when they go to the polling station, it might be too late. Some suggest that we can use technology to help. Of course, the government wants to be ahead of even the more advanced countries, uh, such as the UK and the US. So. I hope that you can perhaps go to the Science and Technology Park and explore with the experts whether it could be done. We hope that at the next election, the similar problems will not occur. Also, we talk a lot about environmental protection. In the election, we're using such a large ballot form. Is that really environmentally friendly? How many trees would need to be felled 
to, to, to print those ballot forms. Now, I'd like to ask the government this question. Uh, the so-called ballot form that we put into the ballot box, could we make it smaller? And then you can allow for more space for the candidates to read the uh, candidates' profile at the polling stations. Thank you. We have put forward this proposal exactly because we want to ask whether the size of the platform could be smaller. And at the polling station, in each of the polling booths, inside each booth, we will display the profile and information of each and every candidate. If members think that this is a viable option, we will explore that option. Right now, uh, putting it on display in a polling station may not be so convenient. If we should take this route, that is, in each of the booths, uh, we display the information of the candidates, perhaps that could be an option. We'll certainly continue to pursue that. Mr. Uchi Wai had uh, registered and he was away, so I'll now allow him to speak. Three minutes. Thank you. Many candidates, many uh, members have already uh, made their comments regarding the proposed changes to the ballot form. Most of them do not agree with the proposal. The reason for the change is has to do with the vote counting arrangement and the question is how it could be done smoothly and effectively. The confusion with vote counting only happens with the uh, uh, DC uh, FC uh, constituency election because the the uh, the the uh, ballot forms will need to be taken to the central polling station. If the ballot forms are counted at the polling station itself, the vote counting is relatively more efficient. If you want to rectify the problem, you should consider how for the so-called super DC uh, function uh, constituency election, uh, you can uh, you know, count the votes on site. You can cut down on the cost of transporting the ballot forms and enhance the, eff the efficiency. Of course, it could give rise to other problems regarding whether the venue would uh, allow you to uh, extend the vote counting time. Previously, it took one to two hours. Uh, we will finish at one or two, but now it may go until four to five. So that's the direction you should explore rather than con suggesting that we should adjust the size of the ballot form and taking the ballot form to a voting uh, 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 vote counting stations. I think instead we should consider whether we can have on-site, uh, you know, uh, vote counting for the Super DC election and so on. For the FC election, it's a lot simpler, and I don't think there will be any difficulty with the vote counting because the number of ballot forms in the ballot boxes would be limited, would be smaller. So next time, I think the issue should tell us that is, if we were to implement the option. What are the difficulties, and how can we resolve those difficulties? Thank you. Any response? I'd like to thank members for that question. No, it's not a question, it's a suggestion. Next month, when we discuss the vote counting and voting arrangements, we can certainly discuss with members again in greater detail on these points. So we've heard members' views. Permanent Secretary, members from you've heard the views of members from different political backgrounds, and I think they are rather unanimous. So please go back and consider the views uh, put forward today. With that, we will finish our discussion on this item, and we will now move on to the next item. Uh, we will now invite the officials to join us. I have to. Well, I have another meeting uh, later on, so I will not be able to uh, extend the meeting. So at 4.25, I will wrap up our discussion on this item.
，大家都收到誒呢、呃這個。Members should have received the papers set out in the agenda, right? I'd like to invite Raymond Tam, Secretary, to、um, give some opening remarks in relation to the report. 誒、uh, 林卓廷、林堅、Slam Chuck Ting、Jeffrey Lam、Claudia Mo、Lau Kok Fun、Christopher Zhang、Elizabeth Quart、Charles Mock、Secretary。Thank you, Chairman. At the CA panel meeting on the 11th of April, I announced that the, there'll be a task force set up led by a deputy secretary of our bureau, and we will. Review the reasons leading to the computer theft incident of the REO, and to learn from the experience and make recommendations in the report regarding the operation. Last Monday, on the 12th of June, I received the report of the task force, and on the following day, I. Submitted the whole report to the panel. At the same time, the report has been uploaded on the website. On the same day, I also briefed the media on the content of the report and also the follow-up action to be taken by the administration and the bureau. The task force would re review four matters in terms of handling of personal data, information, technology, security, the security arrangement for election venues, as well as internal supervision and review system of the REO. And we have made a number of improvements, rec、uh, recommendations. I will invite Ms. Law to brief you on details of the report. But、um, I'd like to take this opportunity to apologize to the public on the th theft of two computers to the public on behalf of the LEO. We understand that it is、uh, very difficult to. Holds large-scale elections, and、um, and the public has high aspirations to having a fair, open, honest, and impartial election. As such, the REO must learn from this incident and continue to make improvements so as not to fail the public's expectations. I have urged the REO to implement all the recommendations as soon as possible. The CMAB will continue to work with other government bureaus, and will also in give full support in terms of resources and manpower on implementing the recommendations. And the uh, uh, Mr. Wong, the Privacy Commissioner, is also here. The、uh, Privacy Office of the Privacy Commissioner for Personal Data has also investigated the incident, and last Monday also released a report of the investigation findings. The PCPD has also make a direction with binding effect, and the REO must follow the direction. As for other recommendations put forward in the investigation report, I have urged the REO to、um, take up all the recommendations comprehensively and make improvements to prevent recurrence of an incident. I defer to Deep as to give you the details. Deputy Secretary, thank you. Just now, the Secretary、um, already briefed members on the task of the task force. I'm not going to repeat it. We have four major、uh, aspects. The first aspect on handling of personal data.、Um, we need to make sure compliance with data protection principle four. And in terms of public elections, since There are no detailed guidelines and proper training for staff on the handling of personal data. There are certain guidelines, but they are not adequate, and staff, as a result, may not have adequate knowledge of the relevant laws. And for the departmental controlling officer for personal data, they may have not taken part in the. Uh, Decision-making process on storage of personal data in computer systems, and that is why the REO should develop and regularly review detailed guidelines and give proper training to staff on the handling of personal data. Second point, in terms of、um, storing and using. 
computer systems involving loading of personal data, the departmental controlling officer for personal data should be consulted. And in the long term, we need to implement um, a comprehensive uh, pri privacy management protection system. In terms of IT security, it is true that um, the IT security is up to standard, but internally, we do not have an up-to-date departmental IT security policy. And and we uh, have not. Uh, we have only been following uh, the previous practices without adequate assessment. And based on the observations above, we first of all recommend that the RU should formulate a complete set of departmental IT security policy procedures and guidelines, and there should be regular reviews of the uh, guidelines, procedures, and policy. And the RUO should ensure that the systems of RUO comply with the departmental IT security policy procedures and guidelines. In terms of mobile or personal data stored on mobile systems, there should be um, approval procedure. And the ITMU, which is a unit under the I, uh, RUO, uh, should play a gatekeeping role because it is... Well, I'm sorry, Deputy Sec, please be succinct because I'd like to save more time for members to ask questions. So there should be proper security measures. Finally, the EES should not be used in public elections. Third point, on general security of election venues, that's basically in relation to Room 107's requirement and also the discrepancy in the, the understanding of security arrangements with the um, AWE. Um, we need to establish formal procedures, and we also need to seek comments from the police. And the EAC should also be consulted, and the security measures at the venues should be strengthened. Finally, the institutional aspect. After each election cycle, the REO will have um, uh, many staff members deployed away from the office and there is a succession problem and the delineation of work is not clear and uh, we now recommend that the principal electoral officer be made permanent and there should also be core electoral staff retained in on election years to Consult the experience from the previous cycle, and civil servants occupying permanent posts should be assigned to take up key planning and supervisory roles, and there should also be clear delineation of duties. Thank you. May um, I now invite Mr. Wong, the first commissioner, to brief us on the work of the uh, PCPD. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I thank the Secretary and Deputy Secretary for accepting our report as they suggest in the opening remarks and the recommendations in our report. I think the follow-up work to be taken up by the task force is similar to our line of investigation. So we have set out the chronology of events in the paper and uh, after that, I'm not going to repeat the points in the paper. I just want to emphasize that after publishing the report, I'd like to supplement facts and, ha and our way forward. On the 16th, last Friday, we received a letter from the REO saying that in terms of the first enforcement notice, first point, that is to forbid the use of information other than uh, voters' name and correspondence in the C election. They have already published a notice uh, we, uh, for inquiry, and uh, we hope that this will not happen again. And the REO has notified us that they have informed the relevant staff. On the same day, when the report was published, We've also informed the complainants the findings of in investigation, um, and there were 1,000 odd uh, such complainants with email addresses 
left, and we inform them right away. And there are also recommendations on training, formulation of guidelines, etc. And if necessary, our office is willing to provide assistance to strengthen their knowledge in this regard and also to advise on drafting. Next, I'd like to cover another point in terms of um, privacy management protection system. We have informed not only the REO but other government bureaus and departments so that they can implement the system. And in passing, the European Union is the largest, uh, is the second largest trading partner with us. And next year, they are going to revise uh, the laws and uh, they may affect Hong Kong in a sense that if we provide goods or service to European Union residents, we may be affected. And as a result, we need to step up um, publicity. Third point, revise guidelines. We now have guidelines for the public sector and the private sector. on the collection of personal data to its use and security. We have guidelines on the whole life cycle, and we're going to revise the guidelines, especially in terms of elections. On this occasion, we're going to update the guidelines applicable to elections, drawing on the experience in the past six months. We'd like to cite examples for reference in future elections. Finally, in terms of seminars, just now the Deputy, Deputy Secretary uh, already um, raised this point, and we're going to assist the government in this regard. OK, questions from members? Four minutes. Questions and answers included. Mr. Lam Chuk Ting. First of all, I need to criticize the secretary because he time and again said that he uh, would apologize on behalf of the REO and he would urge the REO to review the situation. But I'm sorry, secretary, you are a politically accountable official and when something goes wrong, um, in the REO, you as the head should apologize to the public. You should not apologize on behalf of the REO office because you are an accountable official. You, you should not pass the buck to your subordinate. Next, uh, about the uh, task force report, I'd like to urge members to read from paragraph 30. It's really unbelievable that the computer with the data of 3 million voters were put in a room without CCTV, without security measures, um, of which the key was not um, put in custody with anyone, and it said that the room was locked. If you could call this a locked room, then I think you'd rather put it in a locker of the LCSD swimming pool locker uh, uh, changing rooms or the combina or, or lockers with combination locks. This is such a sloppy job. We're talking about the personal data of three million voters. So my question for the administration is this. Do you know who held the key cards at the time because at the time because it's mentioned that the REO did not have information as to who had the key. Secretary, I'll defer to Ms. Wong to Mr. Wong to take your second question. I accept Mr. Lam Chuk Ting's criticism with modesty. Well, on different occasions, uh, attending Lachko's meetings and in front of the media, I uh, gave apologies, um, no matter it's on my behalf as the secretary or on behalf of the REO. The administration and the bureau accept criticisms, but at the same time, we understand that we, we need to follow up um, two issues. We need to understand the um, 
the uh, cause of the incident and also to minimize the adverse impact of the public. And we also need to consider improvements in the institutional aspects in the short and long term. And these recommendations have been set out in the task force report. I would refer to Mr. Wong to respond to the second part of your question. Chairman, regarding the room in question, the, uh, as to which colleagues in the RIO had the key to access the room, of course we have such information. But other than that particular door, there was another. There is another door, as we said in paragraph uh, 30. There is a door at the pantry which will lead directly to the room in question. That door basically is locked. For the REO, when we use that room, we did not have the key to that door, to open that door. As for the AW, uh, uh, yeah, how many of the people have keys to that door, we don't know. You don't even have such information now? Who had access to that, such keys and how many people have such keys if you don't know? So it's like the, the swimming pool managed by the LCST and anybody can 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 open the lock. I'm sorry your time is up. I'd like to give the opportunity to other speakers to, 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 to ask questions. Jeffrey Lam. I think the, this incident shows that there are security flaws where the government handle the information pertaining to the uh, voters. I don't understand why you need to take the information <laughs> relating to all the electorate in Hong Kong for uh, an election which involved only 1,200 members of the election committee. When the officials answer the question about the security arrangements for the room in question. Now, for such an important document, uh, f shouldn't the security, first of all, take a look at the the room in question for security reasons. Uh, perhaps you should liaise with the security bureau. You should tell them that you're going to place some important information there. And what's what security service the bureau could provide to ensure that the property in that room will be safe. Uh, some people want to hold, you know, somebody of, uh, accountable for this. I think this is only a tactic to hurt the credibility of the government. What is important is that we should review uh, the, what happened so that to ensure that in future you will, you know, have all the security arrangements in place and conduct a dry run before you place sensitive information in a certain place. And if you don't have enough information, then you should recruit security experts or install CCTV or sensors uh, in, at the place. What I can see now is that you've not done that before the incident. And the uh, uh, chief electoral officer told us that there's another door that can lead from the pantry to the room in question. And this apparently is very crude security arrangements. I think the important thing is remedy. For the question that I raised, could you tell me whether there are safer, you know, arrangements that can give us the confidence, uh, you know, in the way you handle confidential information? Thank you. I will start and I will ask the Deputy Secretary Supplement. In the report, we said that for the security of Room 107 over that weekend, we have placed our trust on the uh, security of, of, uh, of the uh, AWO, and, and that is not enough, Deputy Secretary. From the perspective of the task force, they are shortcomings in several areas. First of all, the security plan. The security for room 107, indeed it could have been much 
better. The EAC, I understand, had submitted the security plans to the police and asked for its advice, but they did it in a rather general manner and wasn't very detailed. In future, when they consult the police, uh, they sh they could be more targeted. And this is so an area where we have consensus with the Security Bureau. They should not just ask the police for a general comment. And secondly, we will require that in future they will have a detailed security plan for the whole uh, you know, venue and the fallback venue. Uh, this time we have placed the focus on the main venue and we did not pay enough attention to the fallback venue. And we will also ask for additional security arrangements at the at the venue. Claudia Mo. The new administration will take up office in two weeks and you'll be leaving your office. But is the political the but the political accountability system is a system. I understand that after the collision at Lama the, Sec the, the Bureau for Transport and Housing published a, an investigation report. Uh, they deleted the names of the parties concerned, uh, pinpointing who, <clears throat> uh, who has made mistakes and so on. There were wordings like that in that report. But this time, the investigation report by the Constitutional Affairs appears to be suggesting that the whole incident was like a natural catastrophe and nobody seems to have to be responsible. Will the Secretary please say it out loud and clear that as the accountable official you, will, you are apologizing to the public in Hong, of Hong Kong and explain why nobody has to be responsible. We were told that room 107 well, could be accessed, uh, you know, from the pantry, and anybody can go to the pantry for a cup of coffee, or, or, or what. So, f with this kind of security arrangement, would you find that rather ludicrous? Thank you. In the task force report, basically, the task force uh, f uh, so, tr uh, was tasked to find out the cause of the. Uh, incident regarding who should be held liable. The report has mentioned the uh, person in charge of the department's concern and also the CSB. Having read the, so studied the report, they will consider where will, there will be any follow-up actions for the colleagues concerned and whether disciplinary procedures would be required. We've submitted this to the police and the, the CSB, and they will decide whether we will need to trigger those pro procedures. If disciplinary procedures were involved, were initiated, the, the colleague concerned should be given you know, uh, a chance to, 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 to defend himself. So we never cannot uh, pinpoint at this point which colleague would be have to be held liable. Now for the EAC, now the uh, PCPO office said in paragraph 18 that well, there's a lack of uh, accuracy here uh, regarding the system of approval. Did you obtain the permit? You didn't answer the question. And secondly, in paragraph 64, uh, the report said that you breached the rules. So I don't need the secretary uh, to be the representative. The, uh, the RIO should apologize. And thirdly, could you explain again this? I think the, you can enter the room directly through the pantry. There has to be a door, right? But the, is, is that door unlocked? It's not that it is not locked. According to our understanding from the AWE, as we said in paragraph 31 of the report, the rooms in the AWE, including uh, the, the pantry, was locked, but uh, the door between the pantry and the corridor is locked. For this kind of security system, for such an important room, how is it you know, accessible from the pantry? Why didn't you answer the question from the previous commissioner as to whether or not uh, the system you use were approved? Why were you not able to answer the question? 
that's no, no so I have to you know tell me your answer it's a lot of fun I don't think we've touched on the most crucial issue, the question of accountability, and no penalty is being suggested in the report. No matter how many guidelines you come up with, uh, if somebody makes a mistake, somebody has to be held liable. Going forward, you said you will be coming up with new guidelines, and there may even be changes in the establishment of the department. I don't think there is a lack of guideline here, but a lack of common sense. No matter how many guidelines you have in place, they may not be useful. And I don't agree that we should do a lot more in terms of the establishment. Otherwise, it would simply expand the bureaucracy. Uh, you ask somebody to monitor the situation and something goes wrong, you ask somebody else to monitor the person who does the monitoring. And then the bureaucracy will simply, you know, you know, worsen. And that's not the solution. So in the entire I, I therefore I do I'm not satisfied with the report. Now now that the notebooks have been Loss has the government held the AWE uh, accountable? If I lease, uh, uh, you know, bought, you know, a room in a hotel. If I lose something in a hotel, I would hold the hotel accountable. Judging, so so have you held the AWE liable, Deputy Secretary? Thank you. Regarding the Asia World Expo, I myself have had a meeting with the AWO. And the impression uh, they gave was that they were only responsible for leasing the venue. Of course, they would provide the basic security, but as far as they're concerned, it is the tenant's responsibility as far as the incident was concerned. When I talked to the IEO colleagues, they've entrusted the security of the AWE to the, uh, to the uh, AWE. And on the 20th, we focus our attention on the main venue, and we and 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 we admit that the security for the four back venue was not satisfactory. We should have been more proactive, in the light of the circumstances and its track record. We should ask for additional security measures. That certainly is our responsibility. And the as the 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 owner of the AWE. Uh, I think we have different uh, expectations regarding the, exp the security of the venue. I've already asked the department to bear in mind that in future uh, they would need, if they need to use such venues, they will have to find out from the uh, landlord or the owner who should be responsible for the security uh, of the venue, other, so that we don't have to ask for additional security, uh, you know, personnel. Whether we're talking about the responsibility or, and well, I think there are two aspects. First of all, the uh, IEO, the government made a serious mistake. Uh, they have been negligent, and they so they took along, uh, uh, you know, the, so such a lot of voters' information uh, uh, there, uh, and it was lost. And secondly. Of course, if you lease the venue, of course you will entrust the security of the venue to the uh, to the owner of the venue. It's like you're leasing a place at a hotel. You place certain things in the safe or a room. If it gets lost, you will hold the hotel accountable. So the government should hold the AW accountable too, Mr. Christopher Jung, Chairman. The in that. Room. The information of three million odd voters have been placed uh, in that room. So such, that is very important information. Mr. Wong said that other than there were people who uh, officially had the key to that room, but one could also end access that room through the pantry. Does it mean that you you think the information is not important? Or you didn't have the, the 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 vigilance and did not consider the the risk, the potential risk. I don't think this is acceptable to the public. I've also read 
the report of the task force and and the two reports from the previous commissioner and in both reports they have listed out the the, the uh, you know shortcomings of the RVO and put and proposed uh, improvements however in terms of the task force report of the Constitution and Mainland Affairs Bureau, there is no mentioning whether the CMAB should be responsible. I don't think that you're being accountable to the public. So my question for the administration is this. In relation to this unprecedented serious theft case, the administration has decided to spend millions of dollars to notify the voters' concern and just apologize and that no account no official should be accountable and would you invite the CMAB to review this incident and see when the internal mechanism can be um can be uh, followed to penalize any staff if necessary well, i'll ask mr Wong Siman to to brief you on the internal review and the follow-up work. And also for um, penalizing civil servants, will there be disciplinary procedures for the Civil Service Bureau? We immediately notified the CSB to engage them. I believe that the CSB will act according to the established procedure and consider whether the relevant proceedings should be initiated. The report and all the information have been forwarded to the Bureau. As for the REO, I will invite Mr. Wong to supplement. Yes, we will conduct internal investigation. In short, we follow the established procedure and will initiate internal investigation. If any staff member is found not to have complied with the relevant rules or guidelines, disciplinary proceedings would be initiated. If after the disciplinary hearing, the staff member concerned is found to have uh, perf have um, been involved in dereliction of duty, there will be a mechanism to follow up on the matter. Uh, that is uh, to warn the staff or even a heavier penalty will be imposed. I'd like to know about the procedures and the outcome. Once you have the outcome, could you please come back and report to us? All right, next, Dr. Elizabeth Quatt. Thank you, Chairman. This is such an, uh, a serious in incident involving loss of data of 3 million voters. I have this feeling that the administration is being irresponsible and the uh, ignorant because the REO has only been following established practices without considering the uh, new measures in terms of IT security, handling of personal data, security arrangement for election venues, etc. I think the majority of the public believed that the government should already have implemented all uh, controls in the, these regards. It should not appear in this report. And now the report sets out the detail of the incident, how um, the personal data of 3 million voters was lost, and it is unknown why the data would be brought out side why uh, there were no, no security measures. Well, it seems that uh, nothing is explained except the fact that it is an established practice. How can you ask the public to accept this report? I just now also heard from the administration that the principal electoral officer would be made a permanent post. In terms of handling of personal data, IT security, and also crisis management, which the government totally lacked on this occasion, I think we need to um, put these matters into the hands of professionals. About the principal electoral officer, you suggest that it should be made permanent, meaning that this officer would be 
uh, totally accountable for these matters? Does it mean that uh, this person will be in a security professional or that the matter will be outsourced? The administration also said that uh, they would investigate uh, whether the, any dereliction of duty is involved, and I think the public would like to know which public officer should be responsible. Uh, if you say that because it is an established practice, no one should be responsible, then the, to the, the public is not going to accept it. How can you um, salvage the public's confidence in the REO in its handling of personal data? Uh, DS, DS can uh, brief you on the requirements of the principal electoral officer. For the principal electoral officer, it is a supernumerary post at the moment. At each election cycle, we come to Electrico and ask for a supernumerary post to be created with a time limit of two and a half years or three years. The implication is that for each election we need to we need somebody to coordinate and prepare for the election and uh, that each time for each election be it LegCo uh, or DC election the post will be taken up by another officer and there is a lack of succession or transfer of knowledge we find it a uh, shortcoming second point for this principal electoral officer if it is made the permanent post after an election, the officer can conduct an, uh, a review and learn from experience. We also understand that the REO needs professionals' help, and that is why we have proposed to set up a privacy management program with the uh, engagement of IT professionals and security professionals to to set up this PMP in the long term, and the. P and the principal electoral officer can lead this uh, project, but uh, it doesn't mean that this PO must be a professional himself. Dr. Priscilla Lowe. Chairman, well, um, this report is totally unacceptable because it doesn't contain any real information and they are not uh, act proactive enough. So far, we are unable to identify the uh, systematic uh, problem. I'd like to ask the Privacy Commissioner. Uh, there is a, a principle of over collection in the privacy law. So, was there ex excessive data? stored and brought out to uh, a place where the security measure was so inadequate? And could it be possible that um, there was somebody from the inside who knew your operation and committed the act as a result because the person knew uh, what um, Lackless attitude you had, and as a result, they would they the, he was able to to take this compute to take the computers away. So my question is, who designed uh, this uh, lax uh, system in the first place, and who agreed with this um, approach, and that this systemic error of bringing along the voters' personal data around. And it's such a major error because the computer contained the personal data of millions of voters and even data with the HAD. I'd like the administration to respond to that. Secretary or Deputy Secretary. Well, I, I thought the question was directed to the Privacy Commissioner, but anyway, I could respond to that. Uh, I, uh, any one of you could respond. But let me just say something and then um, I'll see if they have anything to supplement. The report has been prepared in a serious manner, and we have been able to identify inadequacies, and the REO also accepts that there are inadequacies in the system, and the report also sets out more than 10 recommendations to improve the existing mechanism. And the task force also agrees that in terms of the CE election, it was not necessary to bring along the personal data of several million voters, and it should not just casually be stored in a mobile device. I think this is already pointed out in the report. I'll defer to the Privacy Commissioner. 
um, about Dr. Priscilla Long's, Wong's, uh, Priscilla Long's question, we have given those some careful thoughts. The REO indeed followed some general guidelines in terms of security management and uh, other um, issues in general. But the point to note is that this is not a general incident. This incident was unique in the sense that first it was the CE election and second the data stored was sensitive. It uh, contained the uh, ID information so a general security guidelines are not sufficient. We believe that other measures mentioned in the special guidelines should be followed. For example, like Dr. Priscilla Long said, whether it was necessary, whether there was excessive collection of personal data. And we also try to strike a balance. We see whether it's proportionate. Now, in this case, first of all, as mentioned just now, for sensitive personal data, be it the um, the uh, security measures or policies, there should be more sensitivity towards these issues, and you need to enhance the protection. Uh, sorry, your time is up. Well, about excessive um, storage, uh, I hope that there will be guidelines too. Next. Sorry, speaker's mic's not on. Chairman. I am utterly, utterly disappointed in the report. First, on on liability, there is no mentioning in the report. Well, the secretary continued to put the blame on frontline staff, both at the press conference on that day and even up till today. But if you look at the uh, four aspects of the task force works, uh, handling of personal data, IT security, security arrangement for election venues, and the internal system. Well, uh, except for the security management for election venues involving the door to the pantry, this might have to do with the uh, owner of the venue. As for other aspects, it's a it's a pro um, it's a point of accountability, and we need to hold the head accountable. So you just. Tell us that you are going to follow up uh, on this matter with the REO. I think that you should take back these words. Even after you step down, you should continue to be responsible. Even if you don't take the lead in investigating into anything, you are still responsible. In terms of IT security, you continue to emphasize the strong encryption of data, even um, doing even more than the OGCIO as requested, and you really have uh, long passwords. And I was talking to some IT security professionals this morning, and they just laughed because because uh, these were I I irrelevant. And we haven't touched on the issue of passwords. Once the password is known, no matter how long it is, no matter how well it is encrypted, it will be useless. In your slide, you mentioned security. And I took a picture, the whole picture. The word password is never mentioned. So you're just trying to avoid the major issue here. Well, let's say if you have a really good lock and if somebody got hold of the key and make a copy, then the key, the lock would be useless. And if you have a mobile phone and then you you take a picture and then you just uh, pass it around, etc., then uh, it's a loss of information. And you did not do anything to guarantee that there would not be another case of theft of computers. But I don't think anyone would dare say that the password has not leaked. You could not guarantee that. I think in the Privacy Commissioner's report, the word password is mentioned. So I think that the whole purpose of the task force report is to um, try to exonerate yourself. Um, therefore, Chairman, I have um, written a letter to 
put on record that I do not accept this report. When we talk about accountability, well, Secretary, I think it's pointless even if、um, we ask you to resign because that we do not have another secretary or political assistant. So definitely, you are the one、uh, responsible, and we must not just forget about the incident and move on because the risks are. Still in existence. Well, I'll give you some more time, Secretary. On the point of liability, please don't、uh, give people the impression that you are passing the buck to frontline staff. Secretary, if Mr. Mock read the report carefully, you would find that it is not justified to say that I passed the buck to frontline staff, because we talk about the、uh, communication and coordination. Between electoral offices, and there are inadequacies. The report has pointed this out. The report recommends that the responsibility should lie with、uh, somebody at a higher level. I'm sorry, but your time is up, and we have other members waiting. Chen Chen Yang, thank you. What is the report of the PCBO or the report of the bureau? You have not explained why. What? Well, does the EES system belong to to which department? In order to initiate such a system, you need proper authorization. So, so what is the rank of the official who has the authority to trigger the?、Uh, the 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 system so that the information could be、um, uh, downloaded, Mr. Wang. Chairman, well, the system belongs to the REO.、Uh, it is being, you know,、uh, you know, designed、uh, according to the needs of different levels of election. Regarding the task force report and the report of the previous commissioner, they have pointed out that. In terms of the use of personal data, especially for elections, the guidelines are not clear. So to answer Mr. Chen's question simply, we are, we will going forward need to follow up on, on this particular area. So any follow up. So once the PC is switched on, any staff of the RIO can download such information, so long as he has the password right. Or does he need authorization from a senior official before he can do that? If you need verification by a senior officer, it, then, then what you said in paragraph three,、uh, that is、uh, the staff and senior supervisor staff who need to use system do not know what is information is stored in the EES system. I think this is rather,、uh, you know,、uh, this is actually a statement which. Is not true. Well, in the course of the whole incident,、uh, the staff of a particular section asked our、uh, IT department that is for the C election.、Uh, we need to verify the qualification of the members of the election committee. The IT team responsible for downloading the information plays the information of all the、uh, electors, voters into the, the the PC. That arrangement obviously is not desirable. We're not saying that anyone can, through any particular、uh, unit, can. Download the information. No matter where the request comes from, the、uh, the information, the IT management team would 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 need to 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 you would need to go through the IT management unit. So information at whatever level, you will need proper authorization before you can access that. You've explained that in the report, but in future, I'm asking uh, what. Uh, What level officer? Which rank?、Uh, which rank officer? Which level or rank、uh, will have the authority to 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 approve that? So for the RIO, you know, based on the decision of which government department or unit do they make the decisions, Chairman? In the course of the、uh, task force investigation, 
uh, we've actually uh, encountered a situation that the chief election officer had mentioned. To access such information, we need somebody in charge in the department. If it involves such large volume of information, the chief electoral officer will need to give the approval. I'm sorry, uh, two members may not be able to ask the question. The last member to ask the question is Ray Chen. Chairman, I've raised said that I'm not able to extend the meeting. I need to attend another meeting. Chairman, uh, so far uh, today, we've heard that the majority of members do not accept this report. I think we should ask them to compile another report. Having read this report and having heard the discussion today, I think the public in Hong Kong is even more uh, infuriated because it's a report in which everybody is trying to evade the responsibility. This is a, a historic case where the information pertaining to the entire electorate is lost and no senior officer is uh, held responsible and no staff involved has to be punished. And they are simply washing the hands of the whole matter, saying that they simply follow the procedure and they're only saying that the procedures are not, uh, you know, perfect. So they're saying that they just follow the existing rule and then they are, uh, you know, eva evading all their responsibilities. We're not trying to hurt the credibility of the government. On the 17th of April, we passed a motion demanding that the officer in dereliction of duty should be penalized. Chairman, having read the report, now, for the chief electoral officer, uh, in charge of this election, does he have to be responsible? Shouldn't he be punished? I think the secretary should have a judgment himself. He shouldn't defer this to the CS CSB. In this report, there is a ridiculous uh, recommendation. That is the chief electoral officer. That post should be changed from a supernumerary post to a permanent post. Originally, his term should expire by the end of the year. Just because he made a mistake, he didn't get a good job. Uh, and because of this blunder, that post will need to be made a permanent post so that he can stay in his post. Is that a penalty or a reward? Is it that the post will become permanent or will the person can stay on and take up the permanent post? So the the chief electoral officer is responsible for the C election, but uh, because of the but, but he doesn't need to be uh, responsible for this blunder, and his post is going to be changed from a supernumerary post to a permanent post, and this is unacceptable. The report of the previous commissioner also talked about the contradiction between the statements made by the staff and the, and the uh, department. So in the report, for example, for example in paragraph 24, uh, it points out that there are inconsistency between the statements by two, the two parties. And, and the Bureau said that it's none of his business. He, he, well, I'd like to clarify that the re recommendation of the task force is that the post of the chief electoral officer should be made permanent. He's referring to the post of another person. Can you ensure that the person will not become a permanent appointee? Uh, Mr. Chairman, could you wait until the Secretary has finished? As a politically accountable officer, it is not convenient for me to comment on the deployment of civil servants. That is a position that we always insisted upon. But I'm sure we have other civil service colleagues present and they have heard your views. Within the department, whether it's the individual staff concerned who had not followed up the guidelines, I'm really disappointed about that. Regarding the shortcomings of the system, I also agree that there are many areas which require improvements. If we need to need more senior officers' authorization before uh, information is uh, uh, access information is uh, applied for and so forth, all these are inadequacy. Well, having read the report, do you think somebody has to be responsible? This is strictly my personal opinion. No, I can't be too brief. Uh, having read the report, I think some of the colleagues involved in the incident, well, I think we need to follow up on them further, but we need to follow the civil service procedure to do that, and I cannot 
make any more comment than that. Since the report has already been supported, we are forwarded to the management of the department and the CSP. Any reasonable, reasonably minded person would 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 agree that we need to follow up uh, uh, in a reasonable manner. I have received a, a, a motion moved by myself and Yang, but I don't think we have time to deal with that. I have already said that we I will you know end the meeting at four twenty five. Yeah, I respect that chairman. I just want to know whether we can deal with it at the next meeting. We do have panels which can defer certain motions to the following meeting. I I'll, I'll ask the clerk to, to consider this. Uh, I'll give you a reply in writing later on. Thank you. Okay, with that, we will wrap up our discussion on this item. Uh, this is the last time Mr. Tam will be attending the meetings of this panel. So on behalf of the panel, I'd like to thank him for the effort he's made in <coughs> helping with the work of the panel, and then we, I wish him all the best. AOB, nothing under AOB. Next meeting will be held on the 17th of July, Monday, 2.30 p.m. Thank you.